Okay, so all I have to do now is strip these. Just bring it down. About an inch. I'll twist it. And then I'll put the uh, the two colors that go to the left motor on one side, one on the uh, and on the other side, the other side, the other ones. I gotta think about also which way do I want this robot to travel? Do I want it to have a front wheel drive, or do I want these to be in the back? Because that would also change the uh, the way that it works. So make sure you know how you want things, but it's easy to change because they're just a couple, it's just four screws that you can work with. Okay, when putting the uh, wire on the terminal block it helps to twist it, give it a little bend and put it on there so that as you're screwing, putting the screw down the uh, rotation helps bring this, the wire around the shaft of the screw. If I would have wrapped it around the opposite way, as I tightened it down, it would have tried to unwrap the wire. So it helps to put it you know, as it wraps around clockwise. Okay, so now the wiring is complete. I should be able to run the motors. But keep in mind that uh, if, when you're running the, uh, the robot later on, if you yank on the cord, a lot of these wires are very fragile and can snap. So it, Another good idea is to attach the cord to the robot where it's where it's really thick and strong so that when if you were to yank on the wire it would yank here instead of yanking on the actual wires. Okay. So find some way to do that. You can also make you know another little piece of metal that clamps over it or something like that. Okay, so keep in mind that. Also do the same thing at the controller because you don't want to be yanking on the wires. Okay, I've turned the robot over. I'm going to be attaching this uh, floating wheel right here. I found that one works just fine. If you want two, then it just adds more parts. But uh, one should work. I'll just attach that with some small screws. I decided to put the wheel on the bottom and the uh, motors on the top because the wheels are going to hang that protrude on the bottom and be about the same as the, uh, the floating wheel so it's all going to work out in the end okay now let me show you a really quick trick on how to make wheels the wheel start out with a piece of wood put a screw in the middle and uh, mark the circle around it the next step would be to set up this uh, little stop block to match your circle. It uses an Allen wrench and I'll move it in so that when the screw head hits the stop block, the piece of wood will be up against the uh, disc, sand disc sander. So, um, don't, don't use the disc sander to hog off all of the wood. Use a scroll saw or a band saw to get rid of most of it. But stay outside the line because then you can use the, the disc sander to finish off the rest of it. Okay, if you look here, I got rid of most of the, uh, of the wood. Now I'm going to use the disc sander to take care of the rest of it. As you can see, it made it uh, perfectly round. Now all I have to do is take that screw out, and where the screw was is the perfect place to drill a hole to uh, match the uh, the motor. So it's pretty easy to do after that. Okay, to find the right size hole, you need to get one of these plates. It's a it's a gauge that you can use. Keep putting the uh, the motor through the holes until you find the smallest hole 
that will work. And that will be the drill size that you use. Okay, so for this particular motor, a uh, 7 16 drill bit should do the trick. I hear a couple wheels that have been pre made earlier. As you can see, we added traction by cutting up some uh, inner tubes and wrapping them around the tire. There's some hot glue strips to add some traction there. Whatever you think of that can uh, help the traction will be to advantage uh, because usually what happens is uh, one of the, the robot with the best traction is the one that pushes the other one out of the ring unless one of them has a superior uh, weapon. Okay, another good thing about these motors is they have the, uh, the switch here to go to manual. So whenever I uh, try to put on a wheel, it helps to put it to manual because then as I'm trying to push it on there, the whole motor doesn't spin. It locks it in place and then I can you know, put the motor on exactly where I want it and then switch it back to power and then it's good to go. It also helps to put a little hot glue on there while you're doing this. Here's the bot right now at its current configuration. So we can uh, test it out. Now if, if one of the wheels went the wrong way, you could easily switch some wires, and, you know, undo the screws on the terminal, switch them around, and then it would work just fine. I like to make the tether about six feet long. That way, you know, you can turn around without having it run over its own umbilical cord. So as you can see, they're pretty maneuverable, very quick. So I would, before you do any weapons or armor or anything like that, it's best to get it to this stage and then work from there.